So it was very clear as I took on the helm of Sick Kids as president and CEO that we needed to address research in a way that was going to set us up for success in the future. And that success is really driven by a vision for how to improve children's health. It's, it's really quite simple. We're here to celebrate this morning the groundbreaking of our research and learning tower, a world-class facility that will bring together in one place one quarter of Sick Kids employees, 2,000 scientists, staff of our research institute, and home for all of us who are dedicated to learning the link between discovery and innovation in the care of sick children. Our vision, Healthier Children, a Better World, inspires us to build a research and education excellence. So standing on this very site in 2013 will be a 21-story, 750,000 square foot tower, a 21st century home where we will continue on our mission to unravel the mysteries of human development and disease profoundly affecting children. Investing in children means investing for the future. The amount of research that came before his diagnosis saved his life. Well, what it means is that we're going to see, over time, the transformation of children's health care in this country. The opening this building is just a wonderful finish line for hundreds and hundreds of leaders in this community and in this wonderful hospital. I commend Mary Jo for really getting this project underway after umpteen years of the board of the hospital and the foundation talking about the need for this fabulous research and learning tower. Well, I think we have to go back to uh probably the time when I joined the board in 2002. I think it was well acknowledged at that time that something had to be done to augment the research facilities. Well, just like the Research Institute, this building was built in the 50s, and we've been in these labs for, I could say, years and years and years. And uh, even though we're young at heart and we try our best, there is a certain lived-in feeling about it. Uh, I don't want to say that things don't work. Everything functions okay. but. It is time, I think, to uh, pack it up and go to a beautiful new headquarters. So when I joined Sick Kids eight years ago as the head of research, uh, the biggest goal was to build the new research building. The concept had been around for some time. It was not clear we were ever really going to be able to achieve this. And yet, working together with Mary Jo, her dad, working together with the board of the hospital, the foundation, all the scientists, the design team, the operations team, the facilities team, the contractors, everybody working together over the last years. It's been amazing to see that concept translate into reality. It's almost unreal, but when you step outside, walk along the street and look up, there's a very large piece of reality sitting there in front of us. So we're all very excited about the move, I was just talking today to one of our scientists who said this is really going to change the way we do science. I remember the day that when we did the ground turning and uh, I remember looking into the sky which was of course empty above where we were and thinking forward decades into the future and saying I can't even imagine what's going to be invented here that's going to change the future of, uh, of child health around the world. But I just know that that's, that day is here. Uh, soon we will see those innovations and those discoveries that will uh, make an enormous difference. My son Hunter came to Sick Kids and Sick Kids saved his life. Hunter is driven by that tower. We have watched it from various hospital rooms, from 
the ground, from the sky, and Hunter refers to it as his research and learning tower. He wants in. He wants a personal tour and he wants, he wants answers. Child health research is important because we really believe at Sick Kids in our motto and our, our mission statement and our vision statement, healthier children, a better world. Well, I'm excited by the opening for a number of reasons. One is that uh, we've been talking about this and raising money for this for a long time and it's finally coming to fruition. I'm particularly excited because I think the concept of a neighborhood where researchers will actually be able to talk to each other, will trade ideas, will be, I think, transformational in how we work together and think about improving the kind of research that we do. We've never had that before in the history of Sick Kids, and uh, we're going to go from great to even greater as researchers. What we tried to do as, a, as, as designers and architects was create functional excellence and in very modular, ordered, and well-structured labs to really support uh, research, good research outcomes. But we contrasted that with these curvilinear, daylit, filled with light and, and connecting between several floors so that we could create those crossroads which were a counterpoint to the functionality of the labs to create places where people move easily between levels, encounter their colleagues, develop those, those great ideas that come out of collaborative discussion. Because the work not only happens on the bench, it happens in discussion and in unexpected serendipitous insights. That's what we tried to create was in that curvilinear, those hearts which are the neighborhoods that, that define the building vertically to really create comfortable, humane and integrated spaces for collaboration. I think the most exciting thing for me is just seeing uh, the potential of integrative science happening when we bring everybody together into, into one building and into various neighborhoods. The future of biomedical research is really about collaboration. It's about uh, multidisciplinary approaches to solving very complex problems. And I think that we've designed a tower that's going to enable us to do those things. I think the other important aspect and contribution that the center will make is to the collaboration, again, ongoing collaboration at this hospital, not just between the clinicians and the researchers, but with the educators. Right? Education is a huge part of this center, uh, both for the people who work here and for the citizens of Toronto. I remember standing on the second floor when the concrete was poured for the theater that is going in there and thinking about how there would be lectures through means of telecommunications. You know, we would be able to connect with people around the world and we'd be able to learn together and be able to share the research and the innovation that is going on in other world-class centers. We have multi-purpose room that will be allow us to do international video conferencing of meetings, of conferences, both in the large auditorium that will seat about 250 people as well as the smaller rooms that can be used for all sorts of different educational activities, both here and connected to anywhere in the province or the world. We have voice activated microphones right across the seating area, so if a person has a question or wants to make a comment, they start speaking, the camera goes to them, the speaker and everyone else can see them, and everyone connected around the world can see that person's comments. So that kind of technological uh, development is really going to be helpful in our educational activities at the hospital. In my judgment, this new facility is going to have a profound impact on Toronto, on Ontario, on Canada, and on the world. This facility will have a profound impact on Toronto, Canada and the world when it comes to our ability to conduct very, very important research in many, many fields. You know, child health research really underpins excellent care. At the end of the day, our hope and dream for the Peter Gilgan Centre is that it changes the way we think about health, think about child health, think about what's possible for children uh, in the future, not just here in Canada but on the global stage. The Gilgan Center is going to be a beacon for child health research here in this community, here in this country, and around the world. When people look to where the best research is happening, they will look here at the Hospital for Sick Children 
and the Peter Gilgan Center for Research and Learning. What it means to me is the beginning of the next hundred years for sick kids. Uh, a magnet for talent internationally and nationally and an opportunity to make incredible change in the lives of kids. We will achieve something we've always dreamt of and that was to be considered one of the very best, if not the best, pediatric research hospital in the world. Peter Gilgan Center will have a lot of impact for many people. It will be a beacon not only to our staff here at SickKids, not only to our colleagues across the province and the country, but to anyone around the world who is focused on and interested in advancing research education and ultimately care for children and their families. Well, I think the new centre is going to be a beacon um, that will stand out and will be a physical representation of our commitment to the importance of health research, particularly for children, um, both locally and internationally, and it will stand and be a representation of that for many, many years to come. This was an extremely complex project, probably certainly the most complex laboratory building we've ever built, maybe the most complex laboratory building uh, built, period. It, very interesting for us because it was built vertically, as an, really as an office tower. Laboratories are never built that way, they're always built horizontally on a very tight downtown site. So for our team down there and for all of the tradesmen and tradeswomen involved, this was pioneering construction. Nobody had ever done anything like it before. Uh, Mary Jo Haddad uh, and Jim Garner, right from the beginning, made it a team effort. Uh, I hope that our people made it a, a team effort, and Don Schmidt and the whole team from, from Diamond Schmidt and the other consultants. When you, when you take that attitude from the beginning, everything becomes possible. The level of collaboration here uh, is, I think, without precedent from what I've seen in healthcare. And uh, the whole concept uh, behind the building, which was, I think, very well interpreted by the architects, is uh, to promote collaboration among different uh, specialists um, studying different, uh, different diseases and problems. And um, that's going to be a real change in the whole medical system. Uh, there's also an economic uh, generator to it um, because uh, it really says to the world that Toronto has declared itself a center uh, of excellence and a center for concentration in the medical industry, if you will. And uh, that has a great economic generator for the city because it attracts the best and the brightest. I think what we really love about the building as architects is really that those neighborhoods almost burst out of the building. They extend out over the sidewalk. They're seen from all over the city in the neighborhood. They're seen uh, up and down Bay Street. And you can literally step out into those bay windows beyond the face of the building. And it sort of connects what you're doing on the lab ben bench to the community beyond. It, it really grounds the research activity and the, and the staff and the research investigators in terms of why are we doing this. It's for the city, the province, and it's transformative for Canada and the world because SickKids operates at that world level. What was so wonderful about working with Diamond and Schmidt was they really took our vision. They took what we wanted to achieve in this building around collaboration, around integration, around spaces where we could inspire people to excel and to really do their best work. They took all of that and they designed a building that I am in awe of. I have goosebumps as I walk through it because I think they captured in every way with the type of materials that we're using, the way the rooms are set up, the integrated spaces, uh, a real sense of community, a sense of inspiration, and I know our scientists will just excel in this environment. I want to thank our donors profoundly from the bottom of my heart. Uh, over three years ago when we launched this campaign, we appealed to you to stretch as deep as you possibly could because we knew that this was a generational kind of project, a project that would only happen every 30 or 40 years in the life of sick kids. And you responded magnificently. Two thirds of the money had to be raised from what we classically call the general public. They have been absolutely terrific in terms of what they have done to support us in this initiative. And quite frankly, without them, it would not have happened. It is that simple. 
I would just like to say to our donors from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of all of the Board of Trustees and all of us here at SickKids, thank you. We could not have done this without an incredible commitment of our community, an incredible commitment of our volunteer boards, of our donors who stood beside us, who stood with us, and who've invested heavily in children. And importantly to our hospital community, our staff, our family campaign has been a phenomenal inspiration to me where everyone at the Hospital for Sick Children, not just our scientists, not just our doctors, but everyone came around the belief in this vision. And I'm so incredibly proud of that. As being co-chair of the family campaign, this has given me an opportunity to talk to people about the Research Tower, to talk to internal donors, people who work at the hospital, and the response that we've had from my colleagues, people I don't know working at the hospital, the entire family of people working in the hospital has been absolutely incredible. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them from the bottom of my heart for their contribution to what is going to be a transformational change in the life of research here at the Hospital for Sick Children. So, thank you. Um, first off, just to say again to Peter Gilgan, thank you so much for your incredible act of generosity and support and commitment to sick kids. Um, but not just to Peter, to beyond, to all the donors who um, made such a uh, huge commitment to helping us realize our goals and achieve uh, what we're here to celebrate today. It turns out that my wife and I had a little baby girl who, when it came time to diagnose her, we had to leave the country. I vowed at that time that that should never happen to another family here in Canada. And to make that happen, we had to make sure that we had the world-class facility that says no Canadian family should ever have to leave this country to find out about the diagnosis and prognosis of their own child. So if I have one main message, it's to say a, a, an incredible thank you to the donors that made this a reality whether it be from Peter Gilgan, who made this life-altering, historic gift uh, to name the building, down to the people that actually literally emptied out their pockets and their piggy banks to help because that's what they could do. Everything made a difference and made this incredible facility a reality. There are no words, really, uh, to adequately thank the people who have contributed to making this crazy dream a success, a reality, you know. When you think about the collaboration that's possible, when you think about bringing in researchers and physicians from all over the world and seeing what they can do when they work together, that's exciting. That to me is going to save lives. And I just, I just thank them all for trusting and for believing, for really believing. It's important. Research is important.